Sponsored by Rabbi Shlemi and Mirla Greenwald. This is a sicha from Lakota Sichas, Chelik Yud, Parshas Vayigash, Sicha Aleph. And the topic of the sicha is that in this week's Parsha, we learn how Yosef and Binyamin cried on each other's necks. And Chazal tell us that they were crying over the destruction of the Mikdashais in each of their portions in the land of Eretz Yisrael. And there are four parts in the sicha. The Rebbe will, number one, explain why the Mikdashais are alluded to in the neck and not the head. Number two, explain why they didn't cry on their own Mikdashais. Why did they cry in each other's and not their own? And also, why Yaakov didn't cry in the Mikdashais at all. Number three, explain how Aveda can help even after the decree that the Mikdashes would be destroyed. Aveda could help to remove that decree. And number four, present the Heira in Aveda Sashem. On the Pasuk, Vayipayel al Tzavare Benyamin Achir Vayifk, and he, Yasef, fell on the neck of Benyamin his brother and cried. U Benyamin Bacha al Tzavarev, and Benyamin cried on his neck. So it says in Gemara, Bacha Yasef al Shnei Mikdashin Shasidin Lies Bechelki Shel Benyamin Vasidin Lecharev. That Yasef cried on the two Mikdashis that were destined to be in the portion of land in Eretz Yisrael that would be given to Binyamin and that would later in the future be destroyed. And Binyamin cried for Mishkan Shilei that was destined to be in the portion of land of Eretz Yisrael that would be given to Yasef and that would later in the future be destroyed. Now it's explained in the Medrash on the Pasuk of Kimigdal David Savarich. It's explained over there the reason Savare alludes to the Beis Hamikdash. And the Medrash says, Matzavar ze Nosen Begavish al Adam, just like this neck is placed in the height of a person, so Kach Beis Hamikdash Nosen Begavish al Elam. So to the Beis Hamikdash is placed in the height of the world. However, when it says Begavi, it doesn't mean that it's higher than the whole world. But rather, like it's explained in the Gemara, on the Pasuk of Ubein Ksef of Shachin, that he rests between its shoulders, which is where the neck is, that the Beis Hamikdash was actually 23 Amas lower than Ein Etam. So it wasn't the highest place, it was 23 Amas lower than the highest place. And this is like the neck of a person, which is in the height of the body, but is lower than the head. And Adarava, to the contrary, there's an advantage to this. Like it says over there in the Gemara, Amri, they said, Nachsi be Pursa, let us lower it a little bit from the highest point. Mishum Dichsiv, because it's written, Ubein Ksef of Shachin, it rests between the shoulders, Ein Lechona Bashar, Yeser Miksef of. There's nothing better in the axe than between its shoulders. And so when it says, Begavi Shal Eilam, it doesn't mean that it's in the actual highest place, but it means like, Besoich Gavi, within the Gavi Shalom, the highest place in the world. It's within it, but not actually the highest place itself. And so that's the reason why the neck alludes to, to the Beis HaMikdash, because both of them are B'Sayich Gavi, they're closest to the highest place, one in the person, the neck, and the Beis HaMikdash, close to the highest place in the world. And there's a difficulty over here, and that is, l'cha'era, what is the greatness and beauty of not being at the very highest point? We said it's not the highest point, it's b'sayich gavish it's within the highest point, but not actually the highest point itself. No matter how we look at it, there's a difficulty here. If there isn't the greatness in being high, so then what, what is the Medrash teaching us? With this, that the Beis Hamikdash was nasan begavish al it's within the height of the world. If being high is not a greatness and there's nothing special in it, then why does the Medrash tell it to us? And if, on the other hand, there is a greatness in being high, as it seems from what it says in the Medrash, that the Beis Hamikdash is nasan begavish al so then the higher the better. So why was the Beis Hamikdash 23 amas lower than Ein Etam? Why wasn't it at the very highest point?
in order to answer this question, we need to first explain what is the Indian, what is the idea of the neck, and based on that understanding, we'll be able to answer our question. So this is now a lead up to the answer. So this will be understood by first explaining the Indian of the neck, the idea of the neck, which the neck is an intermediate between the head and the body, and it's an intermediate for two things. Number one, the general highest, the general life force is found in the brain in the head, and it's drawn down to the body through the trachea, esophagus, and arteries that are in the neck. And number two, the same is true regarding drawing down the intellect from the brain in the head, that the way the intellect goes to the heart is through the Meitzer Shabagarin, the constriction in the throat, which is in the neck. So we see that the neck is an intermediate between the head and the body for two things. And it seems like these two things, one of them is more physical and one of them is more spiritual. The more physical one is the general highest, the general life force. And the more spiritual one is the intellect, the mind controlling the rest of the body. So it comes out that there's an advantage in the neck even over the head because it's specifically the neck that actualizes the purpose of the head which is that all the limbs should get their highest, they should get their life force from the head, and that all the limbs should all conduct themselves according to the intellect. Now, even though the greatness of the head on its own is greater than the greatness of the neck on its own, and that's the very reason why the head is physically higher than the neck, but nevertheless, this greatness of the head over the neck is only in the hierarchy of the levels. When you look at the hierarchy of the levels, the head is greater than the neck. However, regarding the purpose and mission of the head, so then there is a greatness to the neck. And that greatness is actually specifically because it's on a lower level. That's why it's able to serve as an intermediate, because it's lower. So because it's lower in the hierarchy of the levels, therefore there's a greatness to the neck over the head that the neck is the intermediate and it has the ability to bring the highest in intellect from the head to the body. According to this explanation about the neck, we could now answer our question about why the Beis Amikdash was not at the very highest point of the world, but it was close to the highest point of the world. So similarly, it will be understood regarding the Beis HaMikdash, which is compared to the neck, that its main greatness is Nachsi Bey Pursa, from the highest point, that it was a little lower than the highest point, just like the neck is lower than the head. The Indian of the Beis HaMikdash is that through it, through the Beis HaMikdash, the Eir key is drawn down and shines to the whole world, even the lowest of places in the world. And therefore, the Beis HaMikdash wasn't completely higher and elevated from the world. It wasn't removed from the world. Because then, if it would be higher and elevated from the world, completely higher and elevated from the world, then it would be too high to bring down and shine from it, the Eirel into the world. But rather, Nachas Pursa, it was lowered a little bit, meaning that it's connected and close to the world so that it's able to shine into the world. So that's why the Beis HaMikdash was within the height of the world, but not at the very highest point, because the role of the Beis HaMikdash is to bring down the Eir key into the world. And in order to accomplish that, it has to have some closeness to the world. It can be entirely removed from the world. And so that's why it's similar to the neck and not the head, because the head is completely removed from the person. And the neck is what brings down the the general life force, the, the general chayas, as well as the seichel, the intellect, into the body. And that's also the role of the Beis HaMikdash, to bring down the Eir Laki into the world, and so it has to be close to the world. And the same is true by the individual Beis HaMikdash in each and every Yid. When the Nefesh kiss in a person isn't in a state of being elevated from one's own Eilam Katan, because each person is considered an Eilam Katan, a small world, so when the nefesh lakis in a person isn't in a state of being removed and elevated from one's Eilam Katam, like the head is, but rather it deals with it in order to be mevarer or mezakech, to refine and uplift the nefesh of Bahamas, which is in the person, and the body, and one's part in the world, because every person has a chilek in the world, a portion of the world that they have to work with. 
So when the nefesh alakis isn't removed from all of this, but is rather engaged in dealing with it, so then the whole person becomes a mishkan and mikdash for Hashem's light. And so that's the state and level and the place of the nefesh alakis where it has to be that it doesn't just stay for itself and it's removed from the world, but rather it has to engage with each person within themselves in their oilam katan so that it could turn the whole person into a mishkan and mikdash for Hashem's light. Again, similar to the idea of the neck, that it has to be close to the body in order to affect and impact and bring down whatever the head has for the body. Now we're going to move on and explain another point regarding this story of Yosef crying on the neck of Binyamin and Binyamin crying on the neck of Yosef and it's directly related to what we just learned. So according to this, we could understand why Yosef cried on the neck of Binyamin and Binyamin cried on the neck of Yosef. Because there is a difficulty over here, which is why did each of them cry on the neck of his brother and not on the head of his brother? Since the, the head is the head as in the most important and greatest part of a person. And the reason is because the purpose of Yidin is like the Maimar Chazal of Ani Loinu Vresi Ella Lishamish Eskaini. A Yid, a person is created for the only the only reason a person is created is to serve their Creator, which means to complete the purpose of the Creator in creating the person and all the worlds, all the Elamis, which the purpose is Lies Loy Dir Betachtenim. Hashem wants a dwelling place down here, and the making of this. Dira depends on the Avaidah of Yidin. It's up to Yidin because it's made through Avaidah Hashem. And Avaidah Hashem is something which is up to a Yid because everything in the ha- is in the hands of heaven except for Yerushamayim, which Yerushamayim is Reishis Avaidah, the Ikra Visharsha. It's the beginning of the Avaidah, it's the main thing of Avaidah, and it's the source of the Avaidah. So that's up to a Yid doing the Avaidah because a Yid has free choice. It's in the hands of the Yid that we should make the Dir B'tachtenim. And this is done through each and every one being mezakech, refining and uplifting their body, their nefesh Bahamas, and their chelik ba'elam, their part in the world. And therefore the main thing in this regard is the neck. That in it and through it, this Avaid is accomplished. It's through the neck when the nefesh kiss is engaged and working with the world that we accomplish the making of the Dir B'tachtenim. And now we can understand why Yosef and Binyamin cried on each other's necks and not on each other's heads. And it's for two reasons. Number one, there's no reason to cry on the head, the neshama of a yid. When we're talking about the neshama of, the, of a yid, the way it is completely elevated and removed from the body, there's no reason to cry for it. Because the neshama of a yid, gam the neshama of a yid, that's above the body, the neshama when it's in the state of a head. So that part of the neshama, there's nothing to cry about. Because it's always connected to Hashem. Even when a Yid is doing an Avera, that part of the Neshama is completely one with Hashem. And number two, the purpose of a Yid isn't in the head, which means the Aved of the Neshama for itself, the way it's on its own, removed and elevated from the body, but rather the neck, which that's the part of the Neshama which is, that affects one's body, one's Nefesh Bahamas, and one's part in the world. And that's why they cried on each other's necks. Number one, because there's no point in crying on the head. The head doesn't need it. And number two, that's the main purpose of a yid, is the neck where they work with the world and within the world to elevate the world and to change the world and to make a dir b'tachtainim. Now we're going to move on and ask two questions on this. The first question is, why did Yosef cry on the Mikdashis that would be in the land of Binyamin, and Binyamin cried on the Mishkan that would be in the land of Yasef. To the contrary, Adraba, each one should have cried on their own Khorban, on their own destruction. Since Adam Kariv ate al Atzmai, a person is closer to themselves, so the person comes first. And this idea that a person is closer closer to themselves is true to the extent that even by the mitzvah of Avas Isro. It's only vahafta l'recha kam meicha. And that kaf of kam meicha is a kaf hadimian. It's like yourself, but it's not the very same. It doesn't reach the extent and the depth and the amount of love that a person actually loves themselves. And like it's brought down in Yigaris HaKadosh, that if, there's two, if there are two people 
and there's only enough water for one of them, so Chayecha Kaidman, the person who has the water, keeps it for themselves because their life comes first. And the Alter Rebbe says this in the Geras Sakaidish, where he writes at great length how much a person has to give tzedakah and how important it is. In that very Geras, he teaches that still Chayecha Kaidman, that a person's life comes first. So we see a person is closer to themselves, so each of them should have cried for their own Miktash. And the second question is, and it's related to the first question, but it's on a different pasuk, on a different discussion, where it speaks about when Yaakov met Yosef. So the second question is, it says in the Zayar, on the pasuk of Vayipal al Savarov, Vayevk al Savarov Eid, that Yosef fell on the neck of Yaakov, and he cried on his neck more. So it says in the Zayar that Yosef cried for the base of Mikdash that would be destroyed. And based on this, the Zaira answers a question, another question on this Pasuk of why it says Eid, and explains that it refers to the last Golas. And the question over here is, why did Yosef cry on the destruction of the Beis Hamikdash and not Yaakov? Why didn't Yaakov also cry? And the answer of Rashi in the name of Rabbi Seinu, that Shma, that Yaakov was reading Shema, and that's why he doesn't, didn't cry, it doesn't fit in the Zayar. In Pshutish Mikra it fits, because in Pshutish Mikra, Yasef cried because of his strong emotions. For, he cried because he finally met his father after being separated for 22 years. And so saying that Yaakov didn't cry because he was saying Krishma brings out and emphasizes the greatness of Yaakov, that even after finally meeting his son, after being separated for so many years, and when thinking that he wasn't even alive, nevertheless, he didn't stop reading Shema. And not only didn't he stop reading Shema, this great joy that he had didn't stop him from being able to say Shema with Kavana. So that answers the question in Pshut HaShemikra, why didn't Yaakov cry? However, according to the explanation of the Zayar, that Yasef cried for the Beis HaMikdash, that would be destroyed, how is it possible that Yaakov Avinu didn't get emotional and he wasn't disturbed and bothered through thinking and knowing about the destruction of the Beis HaMikdash. And nevertheless, despite this, he was able to say Krishna with Kavana. The explanation is, to answer these two questions, the purpose of crying is to make it easier for the one crying. Like we see, that when a person cries about something that pains and distresses them, it doesn't have the ability to fix the thing that caused the crying, but it does release some of the pain. And like it says in Tehillim, My tears were bred for me, which means that the tears help the person. They release some of the pain. And so from here it's understood that when a person is able to fix the problem, then to the contrary, they shouldn't calm themselves down with crying and then be less inclined and feel less of an urgency to fix the thing, but rather they must actually be involved in fixing the thing itself. And therefore, when a person sees the Chorben Beis HaMikdash of another Yid, they join in their pain and cry. However, the main fixing and building of the Beis HaMikdash of that other Yid is not up to this person but rather it's up to the other Yid. A person is able and obligated to help another Yid in two ways. Number one, through being mechiach them, directing them, correcting them, rebuking them. And number two, through being mispal for them. However, the actual removal of the Averis and building of the other person's Beis HaMikdash is up to the other person who is a Baal Bechira. And after a person already did everything that they are able to do to help the other Yid, and they see that the other Yid's Beis HaMikdash is still destroyed, it will pain them and they will cry. However, when a person sees the Chorban of their own Beis HaMikdash, so then they cannot be content with a sigh and with crying. But rather, a person must fix and rebuild their Beis HaMikdash. And this is unless the crying is with tears of tshuva, which then the tears are part of the tshuva itself. But when there's something that actually has to be fixed, then a person can be content with a sigh and with crying. And sometimes, actually, the crying weakens a person's avayda to build their base in Mikdash. So not only can't the person be content with it, but it's even unhelpful because a person tells themselves that they did enough by crying. And according to this, we can answer our questions. Therefore, Yasef and Binyamin each cried for the base Mikdash of the other and not for their own. Because for one's own base Mikdash, one shouldn't cry, but rather one should act.
And so too, Yaakov didn't cry for the Churban Beis Hamikdash at all, but rather Hayakayre Eshma, because he is the father of all Yidin. And so the Mishkan and the Beis Hamikdash are in his portion. He's the father of all Yidin. And so for him, he shouldn't be involved in crying, but rather in acting and doing something, and he was doing something. Therefore, he was occupied with fixing and building the Beis HaMikdash. By Yaakov, not only didn't he cry, but he was actually occupied with fixing and building the Beis HaMikdash. How was, how was saying Krishma, which, what Yaakov, which is what Yaakov was doing, how was that fixing and building the Beis HaMikdash? The Indian of the Beis HaMikdash is, like the Rambam sev, says, is to be a bias mukhan the Karbanas, a house that's ready for Karbanas to be brought in it. And kol Krishma, it says whoever reads Krishna, it's like they're bringing a carbon. So Yaakov was busy with building the base of Mikdash. And the inner explanation for why saying Krishna is like a carbon is because the main Indian of a carbon is Adam Kiyakriv Mikem carbon Lavaya. It's Mikem that a person brings themselves close. And that's like Krishna and the Mr. Snefish, which is in Krishna. That the idea of Krishna and the Mr. Snefish in Krishna, the whole Nafshacha, Filu Naitalas Nafshacha, is that a person brings themselves close to Hashem. And so Yaakov, not only wasn't he crying, but he was actively building and fixing the Chorben Beis HaMikdash by saying Krishma. Now we're going to explain one last point about this story of Yasef and Binyamin crying on one another's Mikdash ice. And that is that you can't ask that since they saw in Ruach HaKadosh that the Mishkan and Mikdash will be destroyed. So if that's the case, it was already decreed from above, no Milo. And uh, so what can they do? It's already, it was already decreed. The reason you can't ask this is because Chazal already said, Afilu cherev chado, munachas al tzavari shal adam. Even if a sharp sword is placed on the neck of a person, al yimna atzmi menarachamim. A person should not stop from asking for mercy. And even after a decree is already made, it was already decreed, it's possible through Aveda to tear it up, to tear up the decree. And like we find, this is in Gemara Brachas, there's a whole story over there by Chizkiyo, who was a king, that Yeshayo gave him the nevuah that it was decreed upon him to die. And Chizkiyo told Yeshayo that Kali nevu oscha say, finish your nevuah and leave. Vayasev Chizkiyo pano velakir. And then Chizkiyo turned to face the wall, Vayispalel al Hashem, and he davened to Hashem. And it says that his tefillah helped Shamaiti his tefillah and he lived 15 more years, Begashmis, in this world. So we see that even after there's an actual decree, a person can still change the decree and have it torn up. And so to here, there was a purpose in what they were doing because they were able to have the decree of the Chorban torn up and, and, and removed. The Hira, the lesson is Chazal said, Kol der nivna Mikdash any generation that the Besa Mikdash wasn't built during its days, Mylin Olaf Kiilu Hechrivoy. It's considered as if they destroyed it. And similarly, we can say regarding each person. The reason the Besa Mikdash wasn't built is because one's personal Besa Mikdash is destroyed. If a person's own personal Aveda, meaning their own Besa Mikdash, was complete and whole, so then Mashiach would come and build the general Beis HaMikdash. And the intent and purpose of thinking about this isn't to sigh and cry, but rather to act. And the act is to bring about one's personal Geula and build the Beis HaMikdash in one's own nefesh. And that will hasten and draw down the Geula HaKlolis and build the Beis HaMikdash in its place through Mashiach Tzidkenu Bekariv Mamash.